there a unique plan to kill America? Is it being enacted by a uniparty, both Republicans and Democrats? And what are the solutions for Holy Spirit-filled, fire-baptized believers? Tonight, we have some prophetic voices who are going to be joining us on the program because I recently had the opportunity to sit down with none other than Gene and Terry Bailey. And we get into their brand new book, Killing America. And some of the questions, I think you're going to be very, very surprised by the uncensored nature of this of this broadcast tonight. And we are live. We want to hear from you. What do you think are the major spiritual battles we're facing in 2024? Let us know in the comments. We're going to be reading your comments. Also, let us know where you're watching from. That's Evan. He's going, he's running as quickly as he can to where your office is and to where your computer is <laughs> in order to find out where you're watching from. Um, and we want to hear from you. So let us know in the comments as well as what do you think is the biggest spiritual adversary we are facing right now? We're going to dive into that and more as we talk about killing America, turning the tide on the tsunami of darkness. Gene and Terry Bailey, uh, forwarded by Charlie Kirk, Eric Metaxas. I mean, the endorsements in this book would make anybody blush. Just amazing who has stood behind this prophetic word, it's not out yet, so you're getting a preview of this right now, and you can pre-order it with a link in the description of this video. We're going to talk about that. Plus, if you go to EncounterNews.com, I don't know how many of you have gone to EncounterNews.com. Every single day, multiple times a day, we're giving you updates on end-time news that matters to you. So if you were to head over to Encounter News, you ought to go there every morning. You ought to go there every evening because throughout the day, there are different posts every single day, Monday through Friday. And if you go through there, you're going to find articles like what you're seeing up on your screen right now. France is about to legalize euthanasia. Now, notice this is right next to the news item that we have our amazing, our amazing investigative journalist, Matea Murta, has been hot on the case of this. They made abortion a constitutional right. And if you're watching in France, we want to hear from you. How did this get passed? What's happening? How can we pray for you? What can we do to support you and the fight for life? So those two are connected because when you begin to devalue human life, it happens across the board. And so first we see them constitutionalize um, abortion, and then they legalize euthanasia. Now, Oregon is passing a bill to decriminalize drug possession any guesses on what direction that's going to go in? And the Pentagon has just come out with a report. You're going to need to take a click on that, Evan. The Pentagon report says no alien presence whatsoever. That they have done essentially, they have done an investigation into themselves, and they have determined. And actually, in the report, what they say is, yeah, we've we've lied about a lot of the investigative work we've been doing and the money. Here's what it says. The aggregate findings of all USD investigations to date have not found even one case of UAP representing off-world technology and authentic, sensitive national security programs were mistaken with UFO programs. And if you look through the government speak of what they're saying here, then what, you're, what you'll see is they say, yeah, we've lied about how much money we've invested into this about when we've been investigating this, but we promise you, pinky swear, that this time we're telling you the truth. Of course, if you want to know the truth, you're going to have to check out the investigation I did in my latest book, Summoning the Demon. I've actually gone into the archives and found previously classified documents and photocopied them in this book for you uh, so that you can see what they're actually looking for, what they're saying, what they're actually hiding, as well as in the back this, this Saturday at the Encounter Charlotte, I'm going to be talking about this. I give you word-for-word -word congressional testimony of what many with high security clearances say is actually going on. So when you go to EncounterNews.com, you're going to find news about you know what's happening politically across the nation and around the world from a Christian perspective, but then you're going to find the fulfillment of end-time Bible prophecy. And I've got an article I just posted there on everything you need to know about Russia in the last days. One of our contributing authors, Lee Brainerd, has an article on there about flat earth. And so if you want to know a scriptural perspective of flat earth, so we're providing apologetics here for you as well all the time at EncounterNews.com. So just bookmark it, favorite it, star it, whatever you got to do, and make that your source for news so you get full of faith. You don't get all fearful 
uh, because we want to stay connected throughout 2024. There's going to be a lot of misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation, and we want to make sure we're giving you Holy Ghost revelation through it all. Evan is, of course, is in the background as always. Yes. He's looking through your comments. Evan, who do we have watching with us tonight? Yeah, so first off, uh, we've got Patty Ball Loves Encounter News. Let's see. Corey says, New Zealand. We got some folks watching from New Zealand. What time is it in New Zealand? I got to know. What time are you watching this at? Let's see. Wendell says, uh, heard the first four items. Shame. I think, yeah, uh, listening to Andrew Whalen with Stephen Schultz on Elijah Streams. I've heard a little bit about Elijah Streams. That'd be cool to get connected, maybe. Um, Marquetta, love the new book. Everyone needs to get it. Um, let's see. Sean believes it's deception. Yeah, that's that's exactly that's exactly right. Uh, also, important note from our encounter ministry team: make sure to add four question marks if you have a question tonight. We want to make sure to find it, and the four question marks at the beginning and end help us to see it. Um, Ying Teen says, I "Love being here." And let's see. Charles says, "It appears non-believers are identifying themselves." I agree. Yeah, no question. Don Richardson, you want to pull that question up? He says, who fits the great USA in the latter days? Where can this great nation be found in the Bible? Uh, does Mystery Babylon sound like her in Revelation? Very fascinating. I've discussed this. In, so if you go back through and you search our YouTube channel, and if you go into our YouTube channel encounter today and search America, you may find some teaching along these lines. But there are some. You're in, you're in good company on several sides of this, and we're going to be bringing you some very special guests coming up on Encounter Today in the coming weeks who are going to dig deep into this, and we're excited about that. So make sure if you haven't already subscribed, you subscribe, you hit the bell so you get notified and that you engage with this content as much as possible so YouTube puts it in front of you. And um, and we'll be answering that question soon and very soon. We did get a question yeah. from Barbara here. Did the, did the Encounter Media class learn a lot? Are you talking about Armed, the Armed Media Conference? That was so much fun last year. And this year is going to be crazy. We can't talk about it yet. We, uh, we're about to announce it. So you guys need to hang tight because you're not going to believe what's about to happen. Yeah, in the next uh, few days, we're going to be announcing um, the Encounter, or excuse me, the Armed Media Conference, August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it's going to be hosted at the beautiful The Refuge uh, Church. Pastor Jay Stewart, amazing ministry, amazing team. They're hosting it there. But the speaker lineup we have coming, just to name a few, let me give you a couple of these. I think Evan's going to be able to pull up a, an image or two. But grab it. Now, first of all, let me tell you, we're going to have Joseph Z, Todd Coconado, Paul Duvall, who, the guy who runs its Supernatural YouTube channel. Um, we're going to have just and so many other amazing guests. We're waiting to confirm, so I don't want to mention uh, their names until we get absolute confirmation of them. But in addition to those, now here's some of the top lineup we're going to have with us. Evan, if you can... If it's uploaded, there, there it is. It's loading. We're going to have, get this, Mike Signorelli. We're going to have Sean Cannell, Omar El Tacori, David Diga Hernandez, and John Maxwell is going to be joining us to talk about leadership through media. And it's going to be the event of the year. Don't think of this as just a media conference. That's kind of been the mistake. The last two years we've done this, people think it's just media. People are getting healed delivered and set free in these media conferences because we want the Holy Ghost to move. We want this to be an anointed, spirit-filled uh, gathering of influencers and people who just want to cup their hands around their mouth and declare, thus saith the Lord, to this generation. And you can get more information at armed.media, armed.media. There's an early bird special going on right now where you can get more information about that. It's exciting things. And, of course, if you're kind of dragging throughout your day, you know, and you're and you need a little pick-me-up, then what you're going to need is a good cup of coffee. And aren't you tired of giving your hard-earned money, the money that God placed in your hand, into woke companies to pick you up and wake you up in the morning? Well, I would recommend Encounter Coffee. EncounterCoffee.com, where you can right now get the Wigglesworth Blend and Azusa Street Mornings. You buy one, you get one half off. This is a limited, limited time offer. Buy one, get one half off. Check it out. That's crazy. People are always talking about preachers or tired of preachers asking for money. Well, we're not asking. We're offering you something in return. You help us help the persecuted church around the world. We're going to send you some amazing coffee. That'll be a blessing to you. And just make it a part of your, you know, you just buy a bag. However, how long does it take to get through a bag of coffee, Evan? I don't know. Uh, for me, maybe like three days. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely like a week or two, I think. It depends so on just how much keep, you drink. Just let that be your coffee and just keep getting. And, you, and you're helping us support the persecuted church around the world and be a blessing to them. 
And so we've just been waiting on all of y'all to get on here and getting ready to dive into this amazing revelation. You know, Gene and Terry Bailey have been so influential and what they've launched with Flashpoint, we did an interview actually with Jason, who's just one of the key members behind the scenes of the Flashpoint army. It really has been a kind of a phenom. I don't know how to describe it. What happened and the pivotal role that Flashpoint has made in this nation culturally and politically. And it's been such a blessing watching that, uh, supporting it from a distance, praying, and then to be able to connect with Gene and Terry Bailey about the revelation that's in this book. Again, I don't think it's coming out until July. So you're getting this hot off the presses, killing America. Let's, can we dive into this interview? Let's dive into it. I'm going to interrupt from time to time in this interview. And if you have questions as you're watching, make sure you put those question marks. What is it? Three or four? Yeah, four. Four question marks behind your comment or in front of your comment so that Evan can recognize those. And we're going to talk through this. We're going to process this together. Then we're going to pray together, and I'm going to share my thoughts and a very, 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 very special announcement you're not going to want to miss. But here they are, Gene and Terry Bailey in Nashville, Tennessee. Gene and Terry Bailey from Flashpoint talking to me on Encounter Today and us, our Encounter Today family. What a blessing. Here they are. America in the death throes right now. Well, there's a brand new book out telling us what exactly is happening in this nation and how we can do something about it. Killing America, Gene and Terry Bailey. Mm -hmm. So good to have you guys. Oh, oh thank you. Great to be here. It's been exciting. I've been wanting to interview you guys for some time now. Now, this book has been a collaborative effort between the two of you. Is this the first book you've authored together? Yeah, it is. Yes. So did, why'd you parse that out? Did you do a chapter and you do a chapter? Did you just kind of... No, we kind of we kind of ganged it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of did everything together on, on all of that. There are parts where you can really read, uh, where Terry's really... You can see her personality when it come out. That's when it's grammatically correct and... Yeah, all correct. It's just spelled That's right. correct. Yeah. That's uh, but Killing America, as I started to read it, I, it was hard to get past the uh, endorsements of the book, which I've never seen anything like this, from Donald Trump Jr. to Carrie Lake to... Kenneth Copeland, it's just outstanding. Have you been surprised by the support of this book? Uh, you know, yes, <laughs> yes. I, I guess I would say I would say yes. I am. It, it's been it's been great. It's been wonderful. But uh, yeah, I've just been blessed to uh, work with a lot of these guys and ladies, and I mean, God's just opened the doors. It's been a God thing. Well, there's a lot of research in this book. Yes. What surprised you the most, uh, Terry, when you were going through this? That was like, ah, oh, people need to hear this. Well, you know, really, we spend a lot of time just in conversation over coffee. And so there's a lot of things that we talk about every day. And we know that there's a need to hear a biblical perspective. Everybody wants to know. And unfortunately, in a lot of churches, there's a lot of issues they refuse to talk about or censor you from. Well, that's what we're getting to next. Censor <laughs> you. That's, that's surprising. You were telling me some of the biggest kickback you've gotten. Is from churches. from the churches. Yes, absolutely. Talk about that. Well, I, you know, let's. What we're dealing with right now, Alan, as you know, is. If you were, it was easy to be a middle of the road pastor. Yeah. Prior to 2020, it was easy to walk, kind of, ride the fence and be all things to all people. Uh, you can don't have that luxury anymore. So I have a lot of people that watch us, and we've discovered there's a lot of pastors that watch. Oh, and they'll say, Gene, we love you. Well, let, can we borrow your church for a night? Well, you know, we can't. We need to be careful of our uh, our more left-leaning parishioners. And, and while I understand that, I'm like, That's you don't get it. You don't understand the state that America is really in right now. And this is where we are. We are in a place where they are. And I'm not saying the Democrats are trying to kill us. I'm saying this is evil. There's evil on both sides, both parties, uh, that, that is trying to kill the the swamp, if you want to say, the elite, uh, the cabal, however you want to en encapsulate that. There are people out to destroy the America that we've grown up with, mm. that we our founding fathers established. That is not the America people want. They want to change it. They want to change your family. They want to change the way you eat. They want, to, they want control over your body and uh, parenthood, everything. They want to take it. It seems like pastors haven't caught up to the fact that we need wartime ministers now, right? We need right. time pastors, one-time preachers. That is so good. Yes. Well, We've got so many. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's not about building your numbers. It's about doing what Jesus would do if he was here on the earth. And, you know, he would stand up and say, no, you are not going to mutilate kids. Yes, he would. And so 
people don't realize that sometimes they're more concerned about building projects than they are about what's actually going on and what people are really concerned about, such as the border right now. Yes. Okay, or their kids, what they're learning in public schools and how they're being exposed to trash. And they've got to real, you know, never before have we had to stand up for a faith like we're going to do. And what people don't realize is if we don't nail this now and stop the killing of America and turn the tide, What's going to happen is there's not going to be Christianity. There's not going to be churches. There's not going to be 501c3. And where in the word does it say that 501c3s are our standard for how we make decisions? No, it's the word of God. That's exactly right. It seems like every election in my lifetime has been increasingly messianic in the sense that every candidate who comes along, we say this is the most important election. This is the most important candidate. Why is this different? Well, because it's more than a candidate. Uh, you know, I, number one, a candidate is not going to save America. That's right. You know, if it's um, if Trump gets in, everybody's going to go, "Woo!" That's my my concern is that um, Christians will take it. Oh, okay, Trump's in, everything's going to go back to you know two dollar gas, and everything's going to be great again. And and Lord, I hope that's the truth. However, that doesn't mean the battle will be over. That's right. The battle for the family. The battle for the church, they don't want, and I say they, because it, it really is, there's an evil out there in American politics, and American business that wants to turn America to the Marxist government of the past. This is, and you know, we grew up uh, in school learning about how horrible communism was. Yep. In public, I went to public school. I mean, that's what we learned. And uh, what happened? You can't, if you went to a public school right now and pulled out a history book, you would barely find any mention of the Great Awakening in American history. That's shocking. Not because it's a religious thing. It's because he, the, the Great Awakening is what determined the revolution that changed America. Yes. Let, me, let me ask this Because very people quickly, rallied together. If and, we and, can. And, and, How many of you remember? I remember learning about the Great Awakening in school. I remember it being in my textbook in school. I remember learning about it people grabbing a hold of the pews or the pillars of the church and crying out because they felt like that they could slip into the bowels of hell at any moment. I, rem- I remember that distinctly. How many of you guys remember learning about, just curious in the comments, learning about the Great Awakening in your public school? And my, how vastly things have changed. That's why this books like this and ministries like this what Gene and Terry Bailey are doing are so essential. And I, I can't I can't encourage you enough to pre-order this book. And again, the link is in the description. So essential because we need to interject that education once again into the body of Christ as well as into the nation so that they know when things get bad where they can turn. Throughout America's history, things have been bad before, but we cried out to God and we had an awakening. And if we know that that happened in the past, then we know it can happen again in the future. Let's keep that going. Banded together and, and fought for America, and that's why we have a nation. But but that's being lost, Alan, to to what we who we are as Americans. Number one, who we are as believers, and the the fact of what uh, Jesus did on the cross. We are now we are now the 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 most uh, criticized, the most canceled religious group in America. Christianity. Well, no question. And when you think about it, what made our country and has made our country great, exceptional, has been our Judeo-Christian values. Yes. The further away you get from those values, the more we see the country falling apart and dying. And and you mentioned the the cabal, the elites, um, the globalists, and there's a lot of conspiracy theories. We're running out of conspiracy theories if they can try right. true at the rate that they're coming true. Right. But a conspiracy theory is the easy way to become a victim. This book lays out what's really happening, but it says that there's a tsunami of evil coming against this nation, right. but there's another tsunami as well. Let's talk right. about that. Well, that's it. The, the, it. And I'm sorry, I didn't get, I kind of got off track. The whole point is there is a spiritual solution to America. Yeah. And that's why, you know, with the, uh, the graphic here with the Statue of Liberty underwater, her torch is still burning bright. Come on. There's, America is not dead yet. No. And what we're going to see, I believe, is what we've been, those of us in the church and contending for a revival, we're going to see that. We're in the awakening, 
it may not have the biggest audience that you've seen yet, uh, but we're already stepped into that. But we're going to see that come much more prevalent. We're going to see, I believe, it, all those prophetic words have come in true. We're going to see signs, wonders, miracles, a great turning back to Christ uh, that we've never seen before. We you see two, it. You two are a big part of that. Revival Radio to Flashpoint. No. It's, this is really historic. Would you have imagined that Flashpoint would have had the impact that it's no. had? No. We, in fact, one time we were talking, too, because he has a revival radio TV show. Yes. And then he had Flashpoint, and he was like, and I said, honey, this is the old, this is the now, it's bringing it together, and it is. But the we pray every day to keep us humble, and we are gifted to be able to be used. And who did we hear yesterday that was talking about when you're in a track race, okay, and it's a relay race, who do they save for the last leg of the race? The, the best. The strongest. And we strong, were all yeah. chosen. I mean, that's really something. So it really is when we get together and we say we believe in Jesus and we learn to, to do what Kenneth Copeland said, which is to reach across the lines, the denominational lines, and if Jesus, the Lord and Savior of your life, and work together— it's last time I checked, Jesus is a little bit more powerful than the other guy. Yeah. Then we, we have nailed it and we have won. But we have got to occupy till he comes, which we say in the book, Luke 19, 13. Yes. Which means we got our feet on the ground, we're in the game, and we don't leave till Jesus says, excuse me, it's time to go. Well, easier said than done. Bringing the camps together, if it was easy, everybody well, would do it. Well, true. But you've been so strategic in this with Flashpoint. What's it been like bringing these streams together? I find it fascinating that the Word of Faith movement is now the predominant force in right. bringing America back to God. Well, I, I think it's been, well, it's just been a God thing, number one. I couldn't have done it on my own. I didn't realize, as I've worked with so many denominations over the years, uh, in, one, in one form or another, that I would tap into that understanding of where they're coming from. But when you talk to people, you help them and say, look, I'm not trying to make you change your denomination. I want to come alongside you. Yeah. Let me help. And let's be real, the popularity of Flashpoint has helped a lot of these yes. people. So they're a little more open now yes, to come on than they were in the beginning. But we've got to come together and lock arms because they're not just going to say, hey, we're going to take down the Church of God and leave the Assemblies of God. That's no, right. they're, they're yeah. coming after everybody. So if we don't lock arms, we're going to miss this. President Trump said this you know, we were sitting down for an interview in Mar-a-Lago, and he's putting on his mic, and as he's sitting down, and we're just chatting, and he goes, you know, Gene, can't do an impression, Trump, <laughs> but he says, you know, if all if you, you if all you Christians would just get together, you could win every election. And I'm like, yep, you're right. If yep. we would just all come together, and, and I'm not saying we have to agree. There are things I don't like about President Trump, sure. you know, that I'm going, ah, you know, I don't know about that, you know, that's okay. We're, a, a, we're not electing a pastor. We're electing a president. And that's we we must elect the God's man, whoever is going to fill that place to the best of the spiritual ability and be a leader that people will be, uh, that will follow. We are the largest special interest group in we the are. country if we would just get together. Yeah. Now, this is a key point. I, and I'll, I want to make sure we say this because we've got to get rid of the buffet Christianity. We have to come together. 2024, we don't get to say... Well, I, because honestly, I, I'm the same way. Some of you say, well, I like this person and I don't like this person. Um, that's great, but we don't have time for that. When you're in a foxhole, bombs are falling all around you. You don't have time for that. Well, then, okay, well, then don't listen to that person. That's fine. You don't have to listen to them. But support the other, the rest of the work, and stand behind, and let's turn this nation back to God. Unity, as we say, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Sometimes it's like bumper cars at a county fair when the body of Christ comes together. It's tough. It's hard. Um, but we've got to make sure that we get the essentials right. We don't compromise on the essentials. Salvific issues, we don't compromise there. That's why we get into such battles with some of the extreme versions of the hyper-Calvinist movement is because they're they're taking entire swaths of the body of Christ and throwing the baby out with the bathwater and just saying, you know, they're condemned to hell. And that's the strategy they use. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. What they've done, what many of the watchdog ministries have done, these, you know, um, fruit false prophet testers or whatever, 
what they've done is they've done what was done to political candidates that we know where the media lies, distorts, takes clips, actual clips, but distorts it entirely so that you get an entirely different narrative presented to you. And for many ministers, that's what's been done. For other ministers who are kind of off in the weeds, all right, we'll just, just leave that alone. Chew on the meat, spit on the bones. Leave that alone. We don't have time to bigger, bicker over those things. We have a nation to turn back to God and a generation to see born again by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I believe Flashpoint is making that happen. They're a strategic part in that, and they're playing their role. And this book right here is going to be a blessing to you. The link is in the description to pre-order because it's not going to be out until July. If you're enjoying this, we've got more to see. More to see, going to get even more controversial. But I need to see some more thumbs up. you got to hit thumbs up there and um yeah we've only got 120 come thumbs on. up and we got more than 300 people watching so come on you gotta do it and you need to share this if you believe more people in the body of christ need to see it now in the comments evan what are we seeing so far in the comments before we dive back into the most controversial part of this interview yeah so far people are really loving it uh, we, we do have a few questions that i'm kind of storing and we'll get to them at the end just to make sure we can cover them Deb said something amazing, though. I haven't found a church in my area. Well, that's not amazing. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> in my area that will even talk about what's really going on in the world today. That's true. Um, and, then, and then someone else mentioned that they, they use Encounter Today as their local church or as their church until they find a local church, yeah. which, which is crazy. We have online membership, by the way, available. And the purpose of that is not to replace in person. We're, we're, anyone who's a part of our online community, we encourage you to find a local church, and we'll do our best to help you with that. But until then, don't remain uncovered. You know, stick with us live on Saturday nights. Come join us live on Saturday nights and let us stand in faith with you and and cover you and pray over you and be a blessing to you. Um, but what other comments do we have before we dive back into this? Yeah, the Harold says, take another listen to Carmen's song, It's Our Time Now, which wasn't that based on a Mario Murillo sermon, by the way? Uh, that was what a great song. Um, you can look that up if you want. Let's see. Deb says, praise God. Um, Tracy, we got thumbs up. We got three thumbs up from 53S. Is that is that Uncle Steve? I wonder if it is. We got Tony, uh, three thumbs up here. We got another thumbs up. Tons of thumbs up. And it looks like the thumbs up count isn't going up on my end. So I got I to gotta refresh or something. Yeah. Hit the thumbs up. Engage the algorithm. Let's dive back into the interview. Here we go. Gene and Terry Bailey. And you lay out strategies for people to really have a real red wave, a tsunami. What are some things people can do? Because they kind of feel lost. Like there's there's... There's these big powers at work undermining our elections. They're doing this, they're doing that. What can the average person do? Yeah, for f number one, vote the Bible. Come on. So you don't... Not your pocketbook. Not your pocketbook, okay? So what you need to do is your own research, and that's what we do. Before we go to vote, we, we pull as many references and pages of data, and we sit down and we talk about the issues and the candidates before you vote. But you must vote. We must get out. I mean, think about in this. Person. In person. Wait, if you know, no. think about it. If everybody voted, we still we still can win. Yep, that's right. You know, and then there's this fact: it doesn't make any difference if you have kids at school or not. Show up to the school board meetings, and then maybe run for. If if the school board was taken over by Christian women, and we said no. That textbook will not be in there. No, we will not have drag queens. Yep. We would change the nation because what that's basically how you kill America too. Yes. Is you go after the kids. You go after God's next generation, his lineage. Well, this is what the left understands very well. They do. They're trying to usurp the electoral process and do things at the educational level or through the right. Supreme Court. So now, two years ago, we were supposed to have a red wave. Right turned out to be a ripple a ripple but it was a ripple i saw it your book it was a ripple it was what happened there and how do we know the same thing's not going to happen again we weren't ready if we had had the results that we wanted and we're praying for we were not ready to stand behind it we would have done the exact same thing as okay great we got our people we've turned this thing around and I, it just didn't happen we believed the press we believed that things were going to be a certain way yep. and it didn't happen that way now, some of these, uh, some of these, since that time, think about it, since 22, we've discovered even more uh, of the corruption on some of those conservatives that we thought were really conservative. We've discovered, well, no, they're not. Yeah. They're not really what well, so we, we thought we were voted. 
they're not really that conservative. So I, I believe there's a, a revelation of the a revelation of the remnant. In the same time, we're seeing the revealed uh, understanding of who we're really dealing with in D.C. And that's what they don't want you to see. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want you to know all that. They want it to be their little club. This is why inside the Beltway is uh, incestuous. They want to keep it inside. Yep. Don't go out. And uh, everybody's taking money from China or whatever. You know, that's it's just not the case. But, um, yeah. And you were... You know, you talk about the conservatives, and a lot of people refer to them as rhinos, and a lot of people refer, refer to them as uniparty, and you just said they were been bought out. Let us just take heed according to what happened in the Word of God with Judas, who sold Jesus yes. for money and what happened to him. So I believe there's a day of reckoning coming to all those people in D.C. and locally that have sold their souls for the dollar. There, there is a day of reckoning. God is not going to let this continue, but we needed to see. We wouldn't have believed this five years ago that we would see what we're seeing right now. That's right. Now, I got to ask you both this. With everything you know, all the connections you have, and everything's up in the air, what do you see? Who's going to be on the ballot? Well, you know, I just talked about this in another interview. I, I, I believe... I st- it, unless they're able to put him in jail for some reason, right. Trump will be on the ballot. Yeah. We're going to ask now here in just a second, we're going to find out who he thinks is going to be on the Democratic ballot. But first, I want to hear from you. Do you think Biden is going to be on the ballot at, during the election in, this November? Or do you think someone else is going to be on the ballot for the Democratic ticket? Who do you think that's going to be very interested in hearing what you have to say in the comments. Yeah, go ahead and throw a yes or a no in the comments, and we'll we'll take a look at those whenever they come in. Absolutely. But how many want to know what Gene Bailey thinks? I mean, with all of the connections he has, all of the information and the research that he's done, who does he think is going to be on the Democratic ticket? Let's find out what he has to say. Yep. Uh, the bigger question I have is, will Joe Biden still be on the ballot? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. And that is changing daily with who is working who and you know it, I, I still believe they're trying to work out a way to get him off the ballot however joe thinks he really can be the guy yeah i mean that's what's horrible what are they going to do uh i think they really thought kamala would be stronger and she has proven to be even worse than joe the borders are kamala. the borders are that's yeah. never been yeah uh you know so I, gavin newsom is not they they don't have anybody in the bullpen that's really going to appeal to the masses. What about Michelle Obama? Yeah, that's well, what I was going to say. You know, now you've gone over into those conspiracy. <laughs> oh, well, we could say more about Michelle. <laughs> that's what it's here again. The, uh, you know. My favorite conspiracy I don't, theory. If that's you, all if you listen to what she, <laughs> what she has gone on and said publicly is yeah. that she's not interested in that. Right. Which I don't believe. Right. You know, like. Because she's just showed up all of a sudden. Yeah. All these events. So, I, you know, that could very well be. That, that would we be could a say that. It's a stop. I think anything's a, a pot. At this point, anything's possible. But the, here's the important thing. We have got to, at this point, realize that there's going to be deception and there's going to be tricks and there's going to be attempted trauma to get us to listen to whatever they have to say and whatever they present. We have got to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Yes. So much now and Holy Spirit for guidance and leadership. So no matter what they throw up, that we can sort out, regroup quickly, and get the, the message out and vote for God's word. Well, not only is anything possible, when you read this book, you realize all things are possible. Amen. Who should get a hold of this book? Who's this book for? Well, it's, uh, you know, I wanted the book, and I uh, talked with Terry about when we were first coming up with the idea. I said, I want this book to be something that the unbeliever would pick up. And the believer, if they saw the cover, they go, well, that's that's different. Let me pick that up. It's not your typical Christian title, uh, How to Increase Your Faith. However, (laughs) however, it is. It's not a faith title. It's it's in there about uh, increasing your faith. You know, (laughs) all of that. So the believer and the non-believer, this is a great witnessing tool. I think what we've seen with uh, Flashpoint has been, we had a big group of people come that were just, they weren't necessarily Christians or they were very nominal Christians, but they were upset because they're upset about the country and where things are going. And I, you know, Trump didn't win or what, you know, yeah. whatever it was, it has turned into a great 
rallying call, a great harvest that we're able to walk into. And that's for all of us. That's just not for Flashpoint. And so, yeah, it's written for every one of those people groups. I tried to de-religious it as much as possible. Yes. To take too much. I mean, I didn't shy away from the gospel, didn't shy away from the word. No, not at all. But I wanted to be able, we did, to be able to read it and not be, oh, I can't read this. This is, you know, too religious. Christianese. We, t- we try to take the Christianese out of it so that we could talk to the regular person. And G's heart has always been to bring the unbeliever into the funnel so that they can then get more training, you know, out of victorious life. What surprised us was the first time we went to Open the Heavens, and which is uh, Pastor Hank Kuhneman's yes. events. And so Open the Heavens with prophets. You would think that everybody's saved, right? And people poured down at the altar. 600 house. people got saved. Wow. Now, Mari Morillo gave the message that call that night. And uh, Hank and I were over to the side going, oh, Lord, let somebody come down. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't let embarrass Mario. Yeah. And then there's 600 people. You're like, who are you people? Why would you come to this event? If you, but, you know, they came because yes. it was a real eye-opening aha moment that people were coming because they said, there's, we're hearing truth that we've never heard before. And there's something about it we wanted to understand better. And I just feel like I can trust what they're telling. That's huge. And they got saved in the process. Well, and, yeah, and another thing, too, that G really tries to do at events is he tries to activate believers yes. to take them a little bit deeper, yeah. okay, and to, to say, do you have some of the truths you've heard now? Do you, do you want to become involved? Will you make a commitment? Come forward. All right, and they're doing it. Amen. And the book not only has history in it, and not only it cuts through the clutter of the political extremes, but it gives you hope, it gives you faith, and you need to get a copy for everybody you know. Let's engage. This is the year to do it. And this book is going to activate you. Get Killing America right now. Gene Terry, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much, you. Alan. What a blessing. Appreciate it. What a blessing indeed. Is America lost forever? With ministries like that, I think there's still hope. And with believers like you, I think there's still hope. Again, the link is in the description for Killing America. How many of you love Gene and Terry Bailey and the work that they're doing for the body of Christ. Now we're going to get to your questions and I have a very special announcement I want to share with you here in just a moment, but let's answer your questions very, very quickly. Evan, what do you have? Yeah, First off, great comment from, I believe, evangelist Rudy Gonzalez. He said, remember how Paul operated and preached on Mars Hill. That is our template for reaching this culture. Um, and I know I'm young, but I actually don't know what IMHO stands for, but it reminded me of our time. We actually, in my humble opinion. Oh yes. Okay. A couple months ago, we were actually on Mars Hill, and pastor released an altar call, and several people gave their lives to Christ on Mars Hill, people that were just walking by. It was amazing to see that happen. Yeah, just before, we were supposed to go to Israel, and then in October, and the war broke out just two days days before we were supposed to leave, and they shut down flights, and so we had to scurry to reorganize our trip. And so instead of Israel, we went to Greece and we spent two weeks in Greece and we were, all of us were like, Lord, why would you send us here? Because that's where he sent Paul. It's interesting that Paul was diverted when he went to the places we went to in Greece as well. He was intending to go to one place and he was diverted. We were intending to go one place and we were diverted. And as we stood on Mars Hill and I began to preach and people began to gather and mocked as some were testifying, some in the group were testifying, and Sharon Candace Smitherman w- was with us, uh, Jerry Ann, Matt and Jerry Ann Webb uh, from Light Breaks Through was with us, and, and others, as they were testifying, some people were laughing, some people were mocking, and this anointing rose up on me. And I stood up, and I began to give an altar call. And those who came to mock stayed to pray and gave their lives to Jesus Christ. And that, God said, that's why I sent you to Greece. Because I want that anointing. You understand, that's that understanding of the republic and of democracy that we have and hold so dear here in America, it was born really there, additionally, with the Word of God. So you bring those concepts from, those novel concepts from Greek history and Greek government, from the republic into democracy, and you merge that with the Word of God, and you have this miracle of the United States of America. And we were there getting that mantle, getting that anointing, to topple all of the false idols here in this nation. And if you're a part of Encounter Today, I believe you have that mantle too, in Jesus' name. 
What other questions do we have? Evan? All right, we got. Uh, let's see, Jim Bob J here says, "Do you feel the rapture the rapture will happen this year?" What do you I think? know exactly when the rapture is going to happen. What? At okay. Eight. Wait, don't say it yet. Okay. So he's about to tell us when the rapture is going to happen, and you know I might know where this is going, but I I don't know if he's gotten some new information. So I want you to share this video right now if you're interested to hear when the rapture is going to happen. You ready? Is this going to be heresy? I know or something? exactly like, when the rapture is going to happen. Well, we need to repent at any moment. Boom. <laughs> it is imminent. Imminent does not mean soon, but it simply means at any moment. That's why you, there there can't be date setters. The moment you set a date, it ceases to be imminent. Imminent means like the sword of Damocles. It's hanging over our head and could fall on us at any moment. Glory to God. Our redemption draws nigh. So thank you for the question. I ought to do a whole a whole sermon on when will the rapture happen. I know uh, the when last the time, rapture will happen. The last time you did, I remember the altar call and several people gave their lives to Christ and it was powerful. So we need to do that again. Your next question, how do aliens fit in the end times. This is this is so important. So I just did an interview, by the way, with Cornerstone TV. Oh, yeah. And the amazing team over there, they're just phenomenal. So earlier today, I did an interview with them. We were live on Cornerstone Television. And I got to tell you, the group of people, if you're a supporter of Cornerstone Television, you, then you've you got good seating, good ground. Because the anointing that they operate in, it's, it's really unique. And I was so blessed and humbled to be on that program. We were talking about this, that I, I never wanted to be the alien guy to talk about this. But when it when the Pentagon is releasing po reports about it, when there's hearings before Congress discussing this, when there is a revival of alien religions, the church has got to stop laughing at this and recognize they have to know how to give an answer. That's the reason why we did this book right here, Summoning the Demon. That's the reason why we did it. Summoning the Demon, AI, Aliens, and Antichrist. And most people don't know. I intended to write an entire book about AI. That was going to be the purpose of it uh, because of what Elon Musk said. He said, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. But as I dug deeper into AI and its fulfillment in Bible prophecy and what's that connected to, it began to take me into all time. And I don't want to give away the connection here. you got to get the book. You can go to blameitonthenephilim.com or or summoningthedemon.com. You can get it there. Get your copy of this book. This could be a Bible study. It's not, you know, the title's radical. It's all scripture. It's all scripture. We're going to talk about all of the crazy conspiracy theories that are out there concerning aliens. There's a whole chapter called Skinwalker Ranch, and I go into what's happening there, but it all brings back to the word. I'm trying to give believers a grid and a lexicon through which they can discuss these things biblically. And that's what I wanted to do. So it's 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 safe. <laughs> it's a safe book that you can do for a Bible study. We just had an amazing report of a teacher who brought this book into their class to talk about artificial intelligence. And the students started asking questions about the end times. So she was able to answer those questions. School let out. And many of the students stayed more than a half an hour after class to keep talking about the content in this book. It's evangelistic. So get it, get get it often, get many copies, and at summoningthedemon.com, I think it will be a, a great blessing to you. Yeah, and also there are two interviews coming up that I'm really excited about based on this content if you'd like to learn more. So one, the Confessionals podcast is, I believe, going to be released next Tuesday where um, they Brother Tony Merkel interviewed him about this, and we went deeper into some other areas too. And then also we recorded recently an interview with L.A. Marzulli that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks that I think you're going to want to check out, where we go deep into aliens. And he found something at Roswell, by the way, the crash site. So you got to subscribe to yeah. Encounter Today. You subscribe to. to Encounter Today. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell so you get notified anytime we go live. Yeah, now, along the lines of rapture, uh, Pee Wee says, when do you think the rapture will happen since the red cows will be sacrificed soon and the Antichrist has to be present to allow them to um, rebuild the temple? We actually, if you go to EncounterNews.com, I, I think there's a search uh, bar at Encounter News, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's take a look at it right now. Go, Yeah, go back to Encounter News. Let's take a look at that here so we can all see it. Yeah, there's a search bar right there. And you could probably search. Just see what happens if you search red. We're testing this all together. Uh, scroll down. Keep going. So you'll see, maybe, maybe do heifer. But yeah. there's there's some articles there on 
on that kind of stuff. And of course, you can search by category. There's end times, interviews, news, spiritual warfare, that kind of. There it is. Boom. What'd you search? Heifer. Heifer. Third, <laughs> third temple <laughs> being rebuilt by Encounter News here. And and we we made an interesting interesting connection uh, recently, and we're going to be doing an interview hopefully with the gentleman who was responsible for getting the red heifers to Israel. So we've had kind of some behind the scenes conversations. So again, Encounter News, Encounter Today, stay connected, and we'll we'll bring you more on that soon. Yeah, now along the lines of the last few minutes of the interview, I think when we were talking about the presidential candidates, um, Trisha and Diddy said, what do you think about Vivek? Now, I know he's not a candidate anymore, but what do you think his next steps are? Well, it's Vivek. Oh, my from bad. From what I understand, Sorry. Vivek. Um, I love his positions. I would love to interview Vivek. If any of you are a part of his campaign or are connected with him, in any way, I would like to have a discussion with him. I'm very, very fascinated. He was the most impressive, as far as I'm concerned, of all of the candidates on both sides. The most impressive as far as presenting a conservative agenda and making the case. And so tremendously impressed with him, and I'd like to have a, a further conversation with him. I think that would be very beneficial for our audience as well as for him and for his, for his future. So if any of you connected with him, I know we're less than six degrees of separation from anybody on the planet, especially with our amazing audience. Let's make that connection and have that interview. But I'd be interested to know who you guys think. The rumor is that Trump has already selected his VP. Who do you think it is? And from what I've heard, they said, and no one is talking about them. So that would exclude Vivek as VP. Who do you think that Trump has selected for VP as far as your sources are concerned, let us know in the comments. I'm very interested in what you have to say. And while we're waiting on those comments, what other questions do we have? Yeah, so let's see. Next up, KJ says, when will America be taken out at the time of the rapture or in the tribulation? It's a great question. Now, there are a lot of things that can take America out from uh, strategically placed EMP, uh, could have dramatic effects on America, uh, internal threats of terrorism, uh, external war, uh, ec ec the, the economy uh, could bring America to its knees as we're following the same pattern of every nation who has ever spent more than they take in. I actually go through this, and if you search at Encounter Today on the YouTube channel, America, you will see my message, Is America in Bible Prophecy? or America in Bible Prophecy. And we talk about some of those things. Of course, the most devastating thing that could happen to America would be the rapture of the church. Imagine every God-fearing person, every person uh, with a strong set of morals who believes they're accountable to a holy God, therefore they don't lie, they don't steal, they don't cheat, or at least they shouldn't. Um, all of a sudden, they're gone. And many of them are run our nuclear power plants. Many of them run key strategic places and sectors in the United States. It would be absolutely devastating for sure. So no question about it. But check out that message, American Bible Prophecy. Yeah, it's a good one. Let's see. Charles Jones says, I agree with Brother Gene. Many unbelievers are hungry for truth. Um, KJ says, I joined Encounter today to watch the NDE, NDE on Mr. Black, the plane crash. Oh, wow. Um, and today, that video on the site doesn't work. Okay, oh. we, we will take a look at that. Um, if as I checked it a couple weeks ago, and it was working. So check it again, and if make sure you go to the premium side of the website. And if it's not working, then you can email us at support at encountertoday.com. Yeah, we're one big family here. So any of you guys ever find anything wrong on a website anywhere, on one of our websites, then email us at support at encountertoday.com. Support at encountertoday.com, and we'll work on getting that fixed for you. Our team's always always ready to help out in any way we possibly can. But what an amazing interview with Dale Black. No question. For sure. Um, loved him. And we've got um, another similar type of interview coming up with Randy K that you're not going to want to miss. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. Uh, let's see. So Matthew says, I am reading Summoning the Demon now. I pre-ordered it so far. It is absolutely worth its weight in gold. That's amazing, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. A lot of, lot of research went into this book, and I think it's very evangelistic. If you know someone who's interested in aliens, AI, you know, or end-time stuff, that's a great way to get them, and I promise you the gospel is preached in the book. So yeah, get it. Also, your profile picture looks like you're eating a big plate of spaghetti. Let's go. <laughs> Charles Jones, my prayers have been in agreement with you, with your word, Bishop, about a move across the U.S. from North Carolina. Thank yes, you so much. Thank you. So much for your prayers. Patty Ball says, watch and pray. Uh, David put Isaiah 42, 8 through 9 in here. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise uh, to Isles. Uh, see the former things. I think something got cut out there. 
have taken place and new things I declared. Um, they, they shall spring forth. Yeah. Come on. Uh, Gwen Jones says, great book. Love it. Yeah, we've been getting some great comments. If you do have a question, remember to put four question marks. Here's a question. Uh, is once saved, always saved? Okay, now don't go starting something now. <laughs> don't go starting something now. So uh, I'm going to tell you this now because we're not going to be able to get into that. On Encounter Today, look in the playlists. I think we have a series called The Salvific Life. Uh, the Salvific Life. If you check that out, I go into detail. I basically sit down and walk through those questions scripturally. And I think it's it's really important for believers to get that meat. And I th there's three messages included in that, if I'm not mistaken. Four, actually. Well, you can't oh, really yeah, it on there the phone, it is. But yeah, the first one is once saved, always saved. Question mark. What it means to live for Christ. That's the first one, and then it keeps going. And what's the next one? Uh, the next one is born of water and spirit. Then, um, once saved, always saved, the salvific life, part two, the truth about assurance. And then finally, faith for the last days, five keys for real saving faith. Yeah, what does it mean to believe? What does it mean to have saving faith? And so in four messages, we break that down absolutely free over there on Encounter Today. A lot of meat there, so make sure you check that out. Yeah, let's see. Linda says, why would you want a 501c3? Why would you want the government to tell you what you can't say from the pulpit? They Const don't. Constitutionally, churches That's and ministries already have tax-exempt status without it. Yes, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. So... Um, tax exempt status does not mean you're five hundred one c three, and there's a lot of details we could go in about that. So just because someone is tax exempt doesn't mean they're five hundred one c three, and just because someone's five hundred one c three doesn't mean they're controlled in what they say from the pulpit. I don't think any church in the history of uh, the Johnson Amendment, which is what many people are referring to, has ever been successfully prosecuted uh, to any extent or degree because of what I think a lot of the misinformation has been reiterated so much to ministers that they're scared of saying anything. And they don't need to be. You can say whatever you want to say. And if you can use 501c3 and not give the government more money and still say everything that the Holy Spirit tells you to say, why wouldn't you take advantage of that if you can? Um, now, if it ever get to a place where you couldn't, then who cares? You keep preaching what God's called you to preach, and you don't need to be a 501c3 to preach. Absolutely agree. So it's important to understand the details and the nuance. A lot of misinformation out there about that, but great, great question. Yeah, so I think we've reached basically the end of the questions. Oh, let's see, Jim Bob. I got a big announcement for you. Yeah, Jim Bob J said we are sealed with the Holy Spirit once saved, uh, sealed. Yeah, so you got to watch the playlist. Oh, by the way. Let me ask you this. Yeah, go ahead. Once saved, always saved. When are you saved? So I'm going to just leave it at that. When are you completely and totally saved? So Good question. You define that often we get into the always saved end of the debate and the argument. Are we always saved? Well, when are you once saved? When does that happen? And that helps settle the debate. You got to listen to the series. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. yeah. It really helped me answer a lot of questions that I had. Uh, let's see. Gail says, explain how we are to love our enemies. I'm speaking of very evil enemies, not people who have done us wrong. Yeah, it's supernatural. It's through the love of Christ. It doesn't mean... so. Often when people have a, this deals with forgiveness as well. Like how can I forgive them with, for what they've did, for what they've done? It deals with uh, where we need to define our terms. Often we think love our enemy means that means we give them a clean slate and we allow them to do whatever they want to do and they run roughshod all over us. That's not what that means. So we have to redefine the God kind of love and what it means to love our enemies. It means to care about the, their eternal destiny through the love of Christ. And I got to tell you this, we got to love one another before we love our enemies. It's easier to love your enemies sometimes than it is to love people in the body of Christ who are so closely connected with you. We got to get that right. We got a lot of people trying to pray for America. They can't keep their whole house in order. Listen, one of the greatest things you can do for the United States of America is make sure your marriage is an example of what it means to represent Christ in this nation. That's the most important thing you can do. You start there. And if you start from there, you'll have power. If you think something else is more important than that, you're missing it. So husbands, are you loving your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself, laid everything down? He was humiliated, stripped bare, tortured. Well, you don't know what my wife expects of me. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And wives, submit yourself therefore unto your husbands. 
and submit ye one to another. You got to get that bond, that unity that's so tight, nothing can get in. Nothing breaks those ranks. And if you'll do that, we can turn America around. If you don't do that, then you're fooling yourself if you think that you can do anything else with any efficacy and be fruitful. What will wind up is you'll wind up gaining the whole world and losing your soul. Can we get to this announcement that I want to make now that's really important? Can I, can I do like two or three more comments? Yes, you can do two or three more comments. <laughs> okay, so we got, we got a response from Jim Bob Jay. He said, when we get our glorified bodies, uh, whereas when, when are we once saved, always saved? When we get our glorified bodies. That's um, a, is that true? That, that's a good answer. Let's go. But go to the series. And see, no, let's go to the series. I don't want to give anything away. I want people to go watch <laughs> because there there's go. so much more to it. That's, that's fantastic. The original question that sparked this, that person uh, responded and said, I mean the sinning part. How can we be spotless? And I think that this is a great question um, and a great point of encouragement. Yeah, well, Abraham was declared righteous by God. And so it's a faith walk. And that that speaks to there's I think it's the last message in that series. Um, is, is it end time faith? Yes. What it means to have faith in the last days? Jesus said, "Shall I find faith on the earth?" What does it mean to walk in faith? What, it, what does it mean to live in faith? But go through the whole series though, because you're going to need the full depth of the understanding yeah. of all that stuff. What it means to live a salvific life. Uh, s- great questions. Maybe we'll just do a separate broadcast. We'll keep these in mind and just answer those questions. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, do a full one. All right, I think that's it for me. I, what is this announcement, actually? Well, I want to talk to you about a new endeavor called the Encounter Book Club. That's what I want to talk to you about. Oh, yeah. How many of you have been watching us for some time? And if so, how did you connect with us? Was it through an interview? If it was through an interview, let me know in the comments which interview it was. How did you connect with us on Encounter Day? How did we first meet? How did we first encounter one another? I want to know right now in the comments, how do we find each other? Because what we want to do now, partnering with some amazing ministry gifts at Destiny and Harrison House and some amazing folks over there, we are starting the Encounter Book Club where we can take some of my favorite interviews and the books that were highlighted in those interviews and feature them for you right here. And you can go and you can shop and you can get 15% off of these books. So Summoning the Demon, Looking Up by Troy Brewer. If you want to know what's coming up with the eclipse, all you got to do, the link is in the description of this video. You got to, you got to find that Encounter Book Club link. And uh, you can get Troy Brewer's book, Looking Up, one of the great books on deliverance right now, Holy Spirit, the Bondage Breaker, recent interview with um, R.T. Kendall, The Isaac Promise. But look down, so many more books of people that we've interviewed. And then there's the books that I've released. And I was super excited about this, some stuff for kids. And then some apparel. You can get a Don't Tread on Me shirt. You can get um, God Storm oh, shirt. That's cool. You like that? Yeah. Um, y'all Need Jesus, which is one of my <laughs> favorite ones. Y'all Need Jesus. Awake, Pray, Slay. Love that. So all of that is available right there. And um, you can be a blessing to us when you go through the Encounter Bookstore. So cool stuff for kids, daily confessions, like Holy Spirit filled, Holy Ghost, comic books, stuff like that, as well as some of my favorite books from some of my favorite interviews, all right there. The link is in the description of this video. But what have we got in the comments? Okay. How did you find us? What yeah. interview was it? Uh, first off, Jew and Greek, I didn't find you. You found me. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's exactly right, because I was Jew and Greek has done some amazing apologetics work. Um, that you need to check out on his YouTube channel. That was like one of our first interviews with Brother Rod there. Yeah. I, was, I remember that. I remember being very nervous because I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, now, now I somewhat have an idea, which is, which is good. Stanford says, ran across you on YouTube about a year ago. Ain't turned back. Let's go. Come on. Uh, Diana, hello, Bishop and all the Encounter team. I call you blessed in Jesus' name. I wonder if you're from the Troy Brewer camp because that's what he says. Hello, my friends. <laughs> blessing and all peace on you. Blessing, in the mighty name of King, King Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Gwen says, when you first interviewed Troy Brewer, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, another one. Last year, interview with Troy Brewer. Uh, love you all. I've grown so much. Mm. Let's see. Heather found us on YouTube. Heard awesome. You, heard you preach, live by design. Heard you preach on Revelation in the number seven. I remember. Was that the week before we moved to Charlotte? It was. Yeah. Before we moved the Encounter Charlotte to Charlotte, before we launched the Encounter Charlotte, we preached on the main theme of the book of the Revelation, apart from Jesus. The main theme is the number seven. And that's in our Revelation series. We have an entire e-course on the book of Revelation, as a matter of fact. If you go to our website, 
uh, verse by verse, we walked through the book of Revelation. It took us about seven years. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And we finally got through it, but it's all on there. And you get through it a lot quicker. We took a lot of breaks, you know. We're Holy Ghost people, so we had to take breaks to have revival break out and healing and deliverance. And then we'd get back to verse by verse teaching. And then we start casting out devils and then get back to verse by verse teaching. Then we. So, word, spirit, truth. Yeah. Our word, word, spirit, church. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah. This is fun. It's like walking down memory lane. Let's see. Shane says, I can't remember. Um, it's similar for me, actually. I don't, I don't remember where I started in this. That was a long time ago. Jan, my son introduced me to your ministry. Absolutely wonderful teaching. Thanks, That's amazing. Uh, Diana says, two years ago, discovered you on YouTube and got one of your Vessels of Glory. Was yes. that with Mario Murillo? Uh, let's see. Jim Jim Bob J found you on YouTube through recommendation from my mother. Let's see. Um, found you through Mario Murillo. Check out that. So go back to that site again. Yeah. I, on there, and we're going to keep adding stuff. We're going through kind of our catalog of different interviews, and we're finding different things. If you go to just the favorite book deals, and there's a, you can click View More. Few more. Let's see. It's right. Up, favorite, it yeah, right there. Oh, right here. Yeah, I say right there, and I point at it, and I realize I can't he can't. See where he can't pointing. see what I'm pointing at. We need to get you a laser pointer. But look at all of these right here. Um, all of Mar Marillo books, I believe, are in here. Uh, you've got some amazing books by Andrew Womack. Um, just all kinds of stuff that you may not remember. Pentecostal Fire by Larry Sparks. Come on, it's one of the best works on the subject of revival and Pentecost. And of course, that's right next to Doorkeepers of Revival by Kim Owens, which is phenomenal. Joseph Z's books, scroll up there. Um, Breaking Hell's Economy, then you scroll up further. Uh, we should see, yeah, Servants of Fire. You can all get them now through the Encounter Book Club and get 15% off. Uh, it might all automatically be applied, or you might need to uh, yeah, use, code, use the coupon it? code Encounter. Encounter. Yeah, use code Encounter. Go check that out for them. Let's test it out. We're actually we're beta testing this right now. So go get a book over there and exactly. add it to your library and be a blessing. Let's see. It Matthew, is, yeah. Yeah, Matthew said, I learned of you through Prophet Joseph Z. You two are the power combo. Well, there's God's doing something. He's he's aligning voices, and we're just so humbled to do what we can to promote many of these voices and to partner with you to promote your voice. If you're a part of the Encounter Today family, we believe that we're just a part of, of the body together, and God has gifted us to be kind of a mouthpiece for you and to represent you and to pour into you at the same time. So, it's a hefty responsibility that we take very seriously. We're so thankful to have you a part of our family. And of course, don't forget to check out Killing America by Gene and Terry Bailey. We love every single one of you. Don't be a stranger. We'll see you tomorrow night, The Encounter Charlotte. If you're in the area, come be with us or live online where we're going to be preaching on the truth about UFOs and aliens. Don't miss it. If you believe we have crashed craft, as uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? He asked me point blank, have you read your Bible lately? And I said, well, sir, I think I know what it says. And he said, well, then you would know that these things are, are demonic. turns out that actually, yes, these things have been shot down and crashed, and the U.S. government has the wreckage. There's just no question that some of the reports seem to tell of the sort of thing that you find in poltergeist phenomena. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning a demon. 